You know, I just had the idea like, what if I crashed an Indian wedding? Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up at the wedding of two complete strangers in Durban, South Africa. Let me explain. I just arrived in Durban and I'm here on a mission. Indian culture in South Africa is unique from anywhere else in the world. My mother is Gujarati, born in India. I have been wanting to build a stronger connection with that part of my ancestry. So I had to come to Durban to come to the source of Indians in South Africa and to see what I could uncover. I'm hoping to have some good conversations. I'm hoping to try some amazing food. This is my first solo trip. Everything you see is just me vibing by myself. I hope you enjoy seeing this aspect of South African culture through my eyes. The first thing you notice about Durban is the tropical landscape. This province is called KwaZulu-Natal and it's humid and green, like a jungle. The second thing you notice, like most cities in South Africa, is the inequality. Just by driving around, you can see the stark differences between the Durban city center and the northern suburbs like Umshanga. My first mission, and maybe the most important one, is to try a proper bunny chow, a truly classic South African dish that has its origins in the streets of Durban. So I'm at Gowden's Takeaway right now. Apparently one of the best places to get a bunny chow here in, in Durban. The spot is, is active. I don't really know what to expect. I'm making a video about my first bunny chow. People told me this was the best place. It's true, I'm excited. We're gonna check out the, this bunny chow and see what it's about. So you know, it's actually tricky, like trying to find the right restaurant and you wanna find local people who can tell you this is the spot to go to. So you don't wanna go to the touristy spot. You wanna go to the local spot. Okay, so this is the bunny chow. As you can see, it's uh, it's beautiful. Technically, the way you're supposed to eat it is with, without utensils. Like, you're supposed to just use your hands. So I'm just gonna go for it and um, hope for the best, so. Cheers. There's actually a really interesting history like behind this dish. While the origin of the dish is debated, many believe that the bunny chow originated in the apartheid era, when it was illegal for Indian restaurants to serve food to black people. The chefs created a portable takeaway container from a loaf of bread to conceal the dish. I can't explain it, but I, I just started feeling very emotional while eating this. No utensils needed. It definitely has a kick to it. I'm pretty sure that the bunny chow cleansed me of most of my sins. But just in case, I'm seeking out some spiritual enlightenment. My grandmother, I call her Motiba, is a practicing Hindu. So I wanted to visit some Hindu temples. First up is the Cato Manor Temple, the oldest Hindu temple in South Africa. I even chatted with this guru who was kind enough to bless me. So I'm here at the Cato Manor Temple. Coming to this temple gives a glimpse into Hindu culture here in South Africa. Next, I drive through the historical Chatsworth neighborhood to get to another temple, which is absolutely stunning. I prayed because I still haven't found the answers I'm looking for. But I did find this veggie biryani at the restaurant downstairs, so not so bad. Just met an older guy named Chandra Kanta, who's been here in South Africa for five generations. He was telling me about the Indian diasporas all over the world, you know? America, Europe, Australia, Singapore, and actually a lot of Indians in Africa, not just South Africa. Places like Kenya and Tanzania, the eastern coast of Africa. On the way here, driving through the neighborhood, looking around, as far as I can remember, I think it's my first time seeing poor Indian people and people who maybe weren't full Indian, so to speak, but you can see in their features and their face that they're Indian. As an Indian person, you know, you feel a type of way. How's it going? Would you make a documentary? More or less, yeah, yeah. But I ask you a question. My name is Avinash. What's it like being an Indian uh, in, in Durban and South Africa? In the 1800s, Indians had come here because of the British. They wanted them to work in the mm. sugarcane plantations. They decided to make the future in this country. We regard ourselves as South Africans. How many generations has your family been in South Africa? I think I'm the third generation. With each passing generation, maybe it gets a little bit harder and mm. harder to retain that 
connection? Did, are you concerned about that? Oh, most certainly. It is slowly dying. I mean, like we see it in our own homes right. as the years are going by. The young, younger generation, they're not going to observe everything. Religion will always be that, uh, that, that force to unite people. As a last resort, they'll always turn to the God. But as far as it comes to your culture, traditions, they are, they are slow, slowly being eroded mm. by Western influence. Western influence eroding culture? Imagine that. Avinash's points definitely hit close to home because even I have noticed how my own family has lost some of its connection to India after moving to America. But luckily for me and you, one way to almost always connect to India is through its food. So I booked a cooking class with Nikisha, a third generation South African Indian and trained chef. Tonight we're having samosas, paneer makhni, and soji for dessert. So we are here at Brayside. I'm here with Yajur, Bandile. Right here is the man with the plan. I literally just shot him a message on Facebook and he was kind enough to let me join him today as he's doing photography and videography as well. Look at us, who would have thought? It's gonna be a good wedding. It's a Hindi traditional wedding, Christian reception. Mm. So it's gonna be a fusion of both uh, religious cultures and we're just gonna have fun. Yeah, we're gonna have fun. Cheers. Cheers. This Airbnb vibes, right? Do you see this caterpillar? This province is what people here called Zulu land. Zulu is actually the most popular language in the country. You, when you greet someone, you say Salbona. Salbona means I see you. Languages have so much power. Language is a currency and it's a beautiful language. This thing has happened to me encountering strangers who are incredibly kind and show so much love. Sometimes I wonder, is it because I'm a foreigner that people are so nice to me? Or are South Africans genuinely this warm? Shout out to South Africans. Interesting to see the way that the African diaspora is spread around the world, the Indian diaspora is spread around the world. And knowing that I can travel around the world and find my my people anywhere. I've discovered that South African Indians are a special type of Indian, truly in the category of their own. Durban, I will be back. Believe that. In Zulu, they say, India Bonga. Thank you. So, Durban, India Bonga. Just wait it, and that will say that, and back, back, back.